Let's move on from fires to markets and some upgrades. Intel upgraded to a market perform from an underperform at Raymond James. The firm saying it's down 30% since its downgrade. It is one of our calls of the day. But Jenny, you know, listen, a market perform, it's like getting medium fries that are kind of cold, right? Like it's better than no fries, but still it's not like a ringing endorsement. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. It's better than no fries. So as you all know, when I say I'm early, it's like, you know, my other word for I have been wrong. So, so far we have been wrong on Intel. It's been down, but no time like today to look forward. And I think what this upgrade does is actually it starts to look forward and it, it riffs off of their investor day. And what it says is Intel says they're investing heavily to attempt to regain process superiority. And then, and then the report goes on to say the path to that goal is very long and expensive. And I am okay with that because what I think is Intel is taking their cash flow. They are investing in these foundries. They will make a lot of money on that and they should get to $6 a share. When they get to $6 a share of earnings, if you put a 15 times multiple on it, you have a $90 stock. If that happens in three years or four years, that's a double from here. And if you say to me, Jenny, do you want to make 100% on a stock in three or four years? I will say yes, especially in this market. I don't need to be too greedy. So while it's long and you need to be patient and you need to take the lumps, I think we're getting to the point where there is a reasonably clear path ahead and it's an achievable path without getting too crazy. Um, so I actually like this upgrade. It's not, it's not irrational. It's not too fluffy. It's achievable. Yeah, Jim, your take on Intel. I mean, it's not a ringing endorsement, but um, the stock is down from the downgrade, so I guess it was a good call on their part. So Jenny knows I want to get back into Intel. I sold it a year and a half ago. Jenny, I'm sorry. I love you, but I'm not getting into Intel <laughs> anytime soon. I think your analysis, yes. by the way, is spot on. I think it's spot on. The problem is I just don't think the stock's going anywhere for the next three months at least. The sentiment around the name is just awful. The chart is awful. Sorry, not trying to rain on your parade. I will be back into Intel. It's not going to be next week. The sentiment is just too lousy. You know, Jim, it's what they teach our kids All in right, elementary school. That's what the power of yet. <laughs> And the power of polite debate and discourse, which we have lost as a country, but is alive and well on this show. Let's move on. Palo Alto <laughs> Networks upgraded to neutral. Another upgrade to neutral. Mom, I've upgraded to a C from JP Morgan. Price target raised to 620. Jenny, I'll come back to you on this. Uh, Palo Alto Networks. I mean, cybersecurity is all the rage right now. It is. So this is in our discipline growth strategy. It is expensive. It's trading at 50 times earnings. But I don't know a company where the 20% earnings growth ahead is more certain, especially in an environment where the threat of cyber attacks, particularly with what's going on with Russia, is high. This is a company that you cannot not have as part of your corporate um, digital strategy and protection. So it's just so necessary. It's so important. And the earnings growth is so predictable and in this environment assured. So we're, we're comfortable owning it and think there's more upside. Joe? Joe? Yep, I, I think both uh, Palo Alto and Fortinet are two names in cyber that you're getting at a discount relative to where they were at the end of last year. Uh, Jenny accurately cites the valuation on Palo Alto. I'll uh, bring forth that Fortinet probably has a little bit of a stronger balance sheet than Palo Alto. Um, and both of these names running at about 50 billion market cap. Take your pick on which one you want to own, but I certainly would want to own one of them from the fundamental and technical perspective as they both sit at the support of the 200 day moving average. All right, let's move on to another tech name, a big one, by the way. Salesforce reiterated a buy at Deutsche Bank Dahl ahead of its earnings next week. Jim, you own CRM, like many tech stocks. Kind of gotten a gut punch here. Your take on the stock and what to ex what do you want to see or hear next week? Yeah, well, first off, I do own Salesforce. It's 5% of my portfolio, including PayPal and Twilio that are in this sort of hyper growth area. 5% is not a lot. I'd like to add to Salesforce. Uh, the problem that I have is that it's not so much what they say, it's what happens with interest rates. This is still a fairly high multiple stock. And I do think that the 10 year is going to get up to two and a quarter percent. 
they can't say anything that's going to change that. Uh, but as that happens, that's going to keep a lid on the stock. So even if it popped, even if they had growth rate higher than expected, I'm liable to wait uh, before adding to it. I'm likely to add to it, but not anytime soon because it's not until the 10-year rises to two and a quarter percent that I think the ceiling comes off the stock.